still love you. Sansa came to court this morning to plead for your life. On her knees begging for me. <laughs> Did he laugh with the others? You do me wrong, my lord. Your blood is the last thing I want. I don't know what you want. I've given up trying to guess. When I was still a boy, before they cut my balls off with a hot knife, I travelled with a group of actors through the free cities. They taught me that each man has a role to play. The same is true at court. I am the master of whisperers. My role is to be sly, obsequious, and without scruples. I am a good actor, my lord. As I said, I'm no hero. What do you want? Tell me. No riddles, no stories. Tell me, what do you want? Peace. Did you know that your son is marching south with an army of Northmen? Loyal lad, fighting for his father's freedom. Rob, it's just a boy. Boys have been conquerors before. But the man giving Cersei sleepless nights is the king. <laughs> The late king's brother. Lord Stannis has the best claim to the throne. He is a proven battle commander and he is utterly without mercy. Stannis Baratheon is Robert's true heir. The throne is his by rights. Sansa pleaded so sweetly for your life it would be a shame to throw it away. Cersei is no fool. She knows a tame wolf is more used to her than a dead one. You want me to serve the woman who murdered my king, who butchered my men, who crippled my son? I want you to serve the realm. Tell the queen you will confess your vile treason. Tell your son to lay down his sword and proclaim Joffrey as the true heir. Cersei knows you as a man of honor. If you give her the peace she needs, and promise to carry her secret to your grave. I believe she will allow you to take the black and live out your days on the wall with your brother and your bastard son. <laughs> you think my life is some precious thing to me? That I would trade my honor for a few more years of what? Of war? Double honors to the elders and the apostles at GMS Great Millstone and a sincere peace, love, blessing, salutations unto all those you hopeful and faithful members of the elect out there doing the best to make the calling of your election short, or wherever you may be in these last days, man. Those of you who have been called, my fellow laborers, man. All right. And uh, as you saw, right, the video, and really where we paused or we left off on it, he said, what about your daughters as well, man? Well, let's go ahead and jump here. This is Luke chapter 15. Forgive me, chapter, yeah, chapter 15. Chapter 14. And, uh, verse 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yeah, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doeth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple, right? Because at the end of the day, man, right? It's not meaning that you need to actually show bare hatred towards these people, but honestly, we're not here to be a father. We're not here to be a mother. We're not here to be a, 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 a right, attached to this world, man. All right, we're here to stand 10 toes down for Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. All right, to the point of death, you see, ultimately, which is the, the uh, ultimate show of faith, man. 
all right? Which is why I said what, we're gonna have to bear the cross. We're gonna have to uh, uh, endure just as Yahweh Shai Mashiach had done, man. Which is why the scriptures say this here. <clears throat> Let's see. This is Matthew chapter 16 and verse 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Right. We've lost and given up our lives in this world. For what, man? For Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, because we're called as what? As soldiers, man. All right, just as you saw, right, this man, what did he say? I grew up among soldiers. I've accepted death long ago. You see, we weren't raised up in this world to be actors. We weren't raised up in this world to be, you know, the, the best server at the goddamn Applebee's, man. All right, we were called for a particular purpose, right? Ultimately to be with the highest, man, as the scriptures say. You see, you are called to be with the highest and so are but few. All right, they ain't going to understand. They're going to bow the knee, man. Whereas the rest of us are not. You see, we're approaching a time, according to prophecy, where the whole world's going to be forced to bow the knee unto the image of this beast system, man. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 13, and uh, verse 15. And you see, all this time, Christian prophecy has told us that this was, you know, some kind of giant image, some kind of giant, you know, right, the uh, the spiritual demon Satan that the whole world was going to bow the knee to. And even as a child, I would marvel at that. Who the hell in the right mind is going to bow the knee to the spiritual demon Satan? Well, he's not going to come and uh, present himself in that way. He's going to come, right, and present himself as a help, all right, through his physical counterpart, which now we're seeing through prophecy, who is it that's making these moves to push forth these laws and decrees? Right, going back to the prophecies of uh, uh, Daniel, right, the different ions, the different beast systems to bear rule in this world, and how one of them in particularly, right, would cause craft and wickedness to prosper, man. In fact, before we grab this revelation, let's go ahead and jump to the book of Daniel, um, chapter 8 and verse uh, 25. It says, and through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart. So he's going to push, right, different laws and decrees to cause what? Wickedness to take place, craft to prosper, man. To ultimately lead to a point that we're going to read in the book of Revelation here after this verse. It says, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but shall be broken without hand. Right, in the prior verses of that chapter. All the different beast systems to bear rule, all the different nations that would have a rule on the earth are described, man. Ending with that one that we just left off on, right, which is going to lead to this point as this beast will be wounded and yet live coming back into the power that you see today before you. It's going to cause the whole world to marvel at it, man. It's going to cause the whole world even to worship it by the life that it's brought to it, the, the power that it's been raised to, man. Um... Right, so as we read on to it, right, Revelation 13 and 15, it says, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now, you'd be a damn fool to, right, <laughs> think that the whole world's actually going to worship some giant image, right? It's, it's talking about the image of this beast, which ultimately is sin, man. That's what this beast system has spread throughout the world, right, has caused craft to prosper and take place, you see? And ultimately leading you people to your destruction, man. And some of us, right, are not going to have the fear in our heart to bow the knee to this image. Some of us are going to continue to stand ten toes down for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and willing to be, accept death if that is what the, the, what presents itself to you for it, man. Right? It says, And he, he shall causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name, right? So, ultimately, he's going to solidify your worship by you receiving a mark, right? Which goes into the Greek word karagma, which means an etching or incision into the skin, man. All right, that's ultimately how he's going to do this. All right, so let's grab some other scriptures here. <clears throat> 